Okay, guys. Um, so let's start where we left off because um, we started having some problems with the camera. Um, let's just go. Let's go and play it, and we can see that our camera spins a little bit more than we want it to. And the reason for that, um, I noticed afterwards, is um, because we've got mouse look X and Y, and we only want Y because our player has got mouse X already. Um, so we're going to change that to Y, and then we're actually just going to change our sensitivity back up. Um, it's up to us really how, how much how sensitive we want it, but you, I, I would suggest not having um, the looking up as much um, as the turning to the sides, because you don't need to look up quite so much as you need to look around to turn. Um, so if we look back at that, um, that's fixed that problem. So we, it was much, uh, much better for that. So we've got our character and we're, spinning, we're walking around and we're doing, doing stuff. Um, and one other thing that we're going to want to look at is um, the weight of our player, because our player now is a fixed weight, fixed mass of one, a unit of one. And everything, whenever you add a rigid bullet to it, starts off as a, as a mass of one. So, say if we were to make a bullet, it would be one, unless if we change that down. I prefer projectiles and things being the one, and then we can change the mass of our actual objects. So we'll change our object's mass. Um, we'll, we'll do it to about eight. And then um, we can change it in the future if we need to. So what we're going to cover in this episode is the is actually adding um, a way a weapon a way to a way to shoot. So the first thing we're going to throw in there is another object, and that's just to just so we can see it as as an object that would represent a gun. Um, so we'll add a cube in, and that's far too big. So we'll scale that one down. Um, so let's bring it. Bring it down, stretch it out a little bit, and we'll put that just to the side, just just there, just so it looks it looks like it's in the right place. It do, it's not it's not really too um, too. It doesn't really matter for now. We're just using it as a reference, and um, just so it's something to look at as well while we're moving around. So if we then we can rename that to. Um, Weapon, and we'll put our weapon in onto our player object, which means that it will map with it. And actually, we'll we'll, we'll put it to the camera, so then it will um, rotate up and down when we look around too. Um, and actually, we need to remove the collider from it because, as you can see, we are um, getting lifted off off the ground by it. So if we go back onto our weapon and we right click on box collider there and we can just click remove component and that will take away the collider. So now if we look down it will just fall through the floor. But for now um, we'll just keep it as it is because it's something to, to look at if we're looking around so we know that we're turning. Um, and yeah so what we're going to add now is another object uh, but this one's going to be an empty one so we just create empty. Now what this is going to do, this is going to be the thing that's the, where, where the bullets come from. So um, if we move around and we'll, we'll put it so the the axes of the object, of the empty object, um, are around, oops, are near where the, where the weapon is. Uh, it doesn't have to be that precise for now. And we are going to have to probably rotate it in a minute, but we'll we'll play around with that when when needs be. Um, but for now, we'll also attach that to the camera and um, go in and make. Now we're going to make a um, object for the web, for the bullet. So we'll just make a sphere. We'll go and create other in sphere, and that's far too big. So we'll just bring that down. Um, Let's make it about that size for now, and we'll call that one bullet. And actually, we'll call the um, empty game object. We'll call that one um, bullet spawn with a capital S. And with that bullet, one thing we're going to want to do is add a rigid body to it. So we'll go component physics rigid body. You get used to doing that, so don't worry about having to um, look back to what I said to do that because you'll get used to it after a while. 
And what we're going to do is keep that exactly how it is. But we are going to need a script for when that moves, to make that move. So we'll go create. We'll right click on in our projects panel. We'll go create JavaScript. And that'll just make it there. And we'll, we'll put it into our scripts folder in a minute. And we'll call this one bullet script. And then uh, we'll open that one up. And the, the thing, we, what we want to do is, so similar to our cube movement script, um, we want it to transform, translate, and we want it to go forward. But what we do, what we also want it to do is we want it to do that forever. So instead of having it on an input, we would simply just copy that into the um, update. So like I said earlier, like I said before in the in episode one, um, that the update simply uh, makes it, uh, does this thing every frame unless if it's got another variable inside it um, so this one's going to happen all the time and I prefer to do it this way but there are other ways of making the bullet move you can um, set um, a physics uh, a rigid body movement to it from the object that spawns it but we're going to do it this way so the bullets always got that on it um, so we can just minimize that and we'll put the bullet script inside our scripts folder just to keep it tidy and then we'll put our bullet script onto our bullet. So now if we press play, oops. Yeah, we need to change, um, it's because we kept the move speed in, so we'll change the move speed. And um, we can do similar, so we could do move speed, and we can then add a variable as well. Um, exactly the same as the character. Um, so move speed float equals, and we'll set that to three. So it'll be faster than the player. Um, so we won't be able to like walk at the same speed, same speed as it. And what we're going to do then is just hit save, um, check on the console again, and now the console's clear, so we can close that. And then uh, we can just hit play, and our bullet will move forwards and down at the same time because of the uh, rigid body. Um, I think I want to make that move faster so we'll, we can either change it here or we can change it within the script but if we do change it in the script um, let me show you. you, you might come across this problem if you change it in the script um, change that to 5 we'll hit save and then we'll minimize that and then if you go into your bullet it will still have it set as 3 because um, that is just an object and um, so one way to get around that is to make this a prefab. Now there's two ways to do this. You can either go create prefab on the project panel and then drag your other object in, or you can simply drag your object onto the project panel and then your, the color of the objects in the hierarchy will turn bl blue. And what that means is that it's linked to the one that's in the project panel. So now if we were to um, delete the one from the hierarchy, it will keep it in the project panel as a prefab. So what that means is it's like saved that object forever and we can duplicate it and we can put as many in there as we want and um, then if we hit play they'll all go. And actually they're really far away I think. Yeah. Um, so let's delete them and what that means is we can easily change if we have a lot of the same object in the scene, we can easily change them by changing the prefab. Um, so say if we bring that then into there and we change the bullet script, we'll drag it onto our bullet and we'll delete the old one. Um, so we've only got one copy of bullet script. Um, this one will now change to five. So if we now bring that out, all of these will be five. and um, it's a lot easier to work that way and actually we do need that um, to, in, to spawn the bullets in the first place so we'll keep them as they are now and what we do want is the bullet spawn we're going to need to add a script to create the bullet and the way we do that is we go create JavaScript and then we want to go spawn or shoot bullet and then we'll put that in our scripts folder and we'll open up shoot bullet and now what we want is similar to um, these 
and in fact the one that we copied from the internet um, before we're going to want um, and I'll show you if you, if you if you ever lose the script or you create a new fo new get new project um, you can easily just go back onto the internet and we want get button and what that means what that has there is what exactly what we'll want for shooting so we want fire one and actually we 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 can use this entire section so it, we can make it so um when we click um we can fire so if we simply copy this entire script uh, into unity into our our scripts let's open up unity um and we put that straight in there um, we can actually just hit save and then our projectile we need to set what it is I'll go, let's, let's go we'll go through the script so what that does is the projectile which is a variable um, is a game object and we need to set that ourselves um, and when we need to do that after we've written the rest of the script so We'll go back to that in a second. The fire rate is a float, just the same as move speed is on our movement script. Um, and then we've also got a private variable, which is only related to this, and we can't see that um, out here. So inside our function update, which I went over before, um, if we press the button fire one, which is maps to um, the left mouse button, and I think it's another button, um, I think it's shift or control or something, and um, that if that and then if time is less than the next fire which is our um, private variable here um, then the next fire is time plus fire rate and fire rate is the thing we set which is basically the distance between um, each each shot can be fired then it will create an object called clone um, which is a game object that is what this is. So it will create a variable of, of clone for that game object. And that game object is projectile. And it's created at the position of the object that um, the script is attached to and the rotation of the object that the script is attached to. And it will create that as a game object, which is here as well. So basically, we can then use that variable to do something else to it if we wanted to afterwards. So basically what that does is um, it will create the bullet, which we'll set in a minute um, where we want it. And because our bullet's already got movement attached to it, it will then it will fire immediately. But what this also allows us to do is add um, a time between shooting as well. So we'll have that. We have that saved. And then we'll go on to our um, shoot bullet script here, and we need to add an object there. And the way we do that is we drag our bullet, which is our projectile, there, and then we release it, and it will um, add it to the to the meaning of what the projectile is. So if we then add shoot bullet to bullet spawn, and then we hit play, we are now cre creating an object. And we if I keep hitting click it will only create it at a fixed rate which is um, 0.5 seconds in between each thing um, so that's all well and good and actually we will we do need to rotate the object and I think we're gonna make that move faster and possibly have a less mass um, so we'll go to our bullet and we'll make that 0.5 and we will also change our speed on our script um, for the bullet and we'll change that to 10 um, and save that and we don't want to close that but that's okay and then we need to also add, add that script back into um, our bullet and remove the other one so now our bullet moves a bit faster and it's got a bit more of a kind of trajectory to it and we also want to rotate our bullet spawn it's, it's kind of a guessing game with this 
Um, and actually, I think we're going to move move the spawn over a bit. And that's too much. So you can you can play around with this, and you can um, change how many guns you've got if you want. But it obviously, it'll it'll fire. You could you could actually make them fire like alternate and things, and we'll we'll cover things like that in future episodes. But at the moment, um, that's as much as I'm going to show in this episode. Next episode, we'll show how to delete these because we don't want infinite amounts of bullets in the scene. And um, thank you for watching. And um, if you have any comments, obviously throw them in the comment section.